Howdy race fans. This is the first in a series of videos where I'm going to go through how I true and balance pancake armatures. And uh, this approach that I'm going to present is uh, usable on any kind of pancake armature, whether it's a, a dash uh, armature like this dash three lamb armature that I'm going to be showing you uh, I'm, that I'm actually going to work up. Or you can do the same thing on uh, like a T-Jet armature or a um, magnet traction armature like these. It's basically the same approach. So, uh, and, but before I get to it, I want to point out that uh, you know, what I want to show you is the way I do things. Um, there's lots of other ways. That people have their own methods for balancing, truing, you name it. And uh, I'm not saying my way is better than anybody else's or worse or whatever. Uh, this, but this is just what I do. And uh, I found that it works good for me. So uh, let's get right to it here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, just take a quick look at the arm. So um, you're just going to look at this thing and make sure there's nothing seriously wrong with it that you would, you know, that would keep you from wanting to work it up. So take a look. Uh, make sure there's no hacks in the com or, you know, bent shaft. Look for obvious broken wires, you know, anything like that. That's pretty obvious. So take a quick look. This armature looks good. So let's proceed. And uh, then the next thing would be to double check the armature for uh, resistance and make sure, hey, it doesn't have a broken wire or anything looking strange. Um, so what I have here is I have a, I've got a nice uh, 87V fluke. It's a nice meter. Um, it has this nice feature where uh, it's set on the ohms here and I can tr touch the leads together. And uh, say it's about three tenths of an ohm here. I can hit this button over here and it'll zero it out. So any reading, well, it's going to flip around a little bit. It's basically zeroed out. So any reading that I take on, on anything is going to negate the resistance from the wires and the connection to the ohm meter and whatnot. Uh, that makes a handy quick check and you don't have to do any math. Uh, but uh, a lot of guys have a less expensive meter. It doesn't have that feature. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to negate that feature right now. And so I touch it together. And yeah, I'd say I got, let's just call that three tenths of an ohm. So we'll get a reading on the armature and then subtract off that three tenths of an ohm. And that's going to be the true ohm reading of the armature. So it's very simple. All you have to do is touch the uh, leads to the solder globs and get a reading. So let's get a good reading here. Looks like 17.6, 17.6, six. all three poles, that's a really nice arm. And that's actually pretty common for a dash. Um, they're usually within a tenth on each pole. And remember, so when I touch the leads together, I've got three tenths. So that means the actual ohm rating of this armature is 17.3 ohms, which is fine. That's this will be good for uh, T jets, fray rules, whatever. Um, so so far so good. So I can set this ohm meter aside. The next thing I always do is uh, check out the solder globs. Uh, sometimes the solder globs are really globby and they stick out pretty far. And if uh, you know you'd, if something happens, maybe that'll be rubbing the bottom of the chassis. I'm looking closely at this arm, and uh, it it doesn't seem like those globs are very big. But I always hit it up anyway. So what I use, I, I got my Dremel tool here, and uh, what I've got is, is this old drum, this old sanding drum. It's super dull, and I basically use it for solder globbing. It's just got a lot of solder, solder on it. Um, because it's, it's dull and it's slow, and this works real good for this task. And so you just turn this on, and you're just going to skim off a little of the solder. Uh, just carefully get in there and take the time, take a little off, if needed. And just, see, I just barely touched it there. There's hardly anything on this one, so I'm just going to touch it. This one's a little more globby. Get a little there. Okay, so you can see this is focused real good. You can see I've taken a little bit off those tabs. And if you look at the side, you know, they're not really sticking out. Uh, so I think that's pretty good. Then the next thing we're going to do 
is uh, check the, uh, comm uh, the commutator runout. And so ideally you want the commutator runout to be running as flat as possible so that, um, the, you know, as you know, the brushes are, are contacting the commutator surface and if the commutator's wobbling like crazy, you're going to lose contact, those brushes will wear funny, um, and you're obviously you're, you're going to be missing speed and you don't want that. So uh, the tool to use is uh, this handy little TGT-1 made by Scale Engineering. Market Scale and Engineering does some good stuff, and this is a really nice tool, perfect for this little task, and I think it's the only thing available that'll do this, unless you want to make your own. So, uh, anyway, what, what I do with a dash arm, uh, because of the way the, uh, the armature windings are orientated relative to the shoulder, I have to put a little spacer in it. I've got a 20,000 spacer that I'm going to put on the top, and this is just to keep the wires from contacting this, uh, this slider on the tool. So put that in there. And if you look at the side, I got plenty of room here. That, that top of the winding is not touching that, uh, that slider surface. But if I didn't have that spacer in there, it might be pretty close. So I always just put that 20 in there. And then uh, we'll just screw the, the top down. Real nice. And focus. Okay. So I, I'd like this this com run out to be under a thousand, or you know, no more than a thousand. And uh, the the graduations on this on this dial indicator are one thousandth of an inch. So that means I, I I don't want the needle to go more than one graduation. So that's uh, it's basically I'm just going to spin this thing and and get a reading. So you see, there's uh, I think that's about a high spot there, at about. Is that nine, eight and a half? And there's a low spot maybe there at about six. Next, I got about two, two and a half thousandths out of kilter. So, what I would normally do, and that's what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to find that low spot and just pry it up a little bit with my thumbnail. You, you don't have to be, with a dash arm, you don't want to get all over it. Just You can just push things around and usually get something pretty close. So, I'm just going to grab my thumbnail here and uh, Pull that out. That's about where the low spot was. And go back and see how I did. Eh, maybe it's a little better. Find that low spot again. Low spot seems to be right around the solder tab, so I'm just going to pull that up a little. So I'm, I'm holding the arm here by these two poles, and I'm pushing up with my thumbnail. There. And see how I did. This might take a little while as I as I overcorrected it just there. So now the old high spot is now looks like the low spot. Somewhere around here is the low, so I'm just going to push gently. Like I mentioned initially, you don't want to push too hard on these because you generally don't have to. There's the high spot. Oh, that's your high spot there. And the low spot is probably about here. I'll pry those up just gently. Looks like I'm going to be fighting this one a little while. <laughs> okay, there's a low there. Yeah, the low is like right about here. Oh, that didn't do much. Spots right about here, and I overcorrected it. Actually, that's not too bad though. I'm almost within a thou, and now the low spot is right about on this solder tab, right about here. So I'm just going to gently, very gently now, push on that. More than a thou still. Looks like low spots on the solder tab. Push that. Hope I didn't overcorrect. A bit of a low spot here. I'm going to push this one up just a little. Push 
this just a little. Okay, I think that's probably going to do it. it. Looks like it's under a thou. And then the next step is I'm going to sand this sucker flat, and then uh, it'll take out these bumps and pumps, generally speaking. So before you do anything more, now we've got to glue that com on in place so it doesn't move anymore. So what I like to use is uh, some of this Instacure uh, cyanoacrylate uh, super glue. I, I like to use this a uh, medium type, and uh, it's it's sort of it's not super thick, but it's not thin either. It's kind of in the middle there. That's I guess that's why they call it medium. And uh, what I do is I put a a little bit into a bottle cap here. Except on those rare cases, like this one, where the lid just where the lid got clogged up, and so what I'm going to do instead is get my little toothpick out, scrape off a little glue. All right, I'll fix that later. Okay, so I've got some glue here, and I've got a toothpick, and um. All I'm going to do is grab a little glue here. Don't want too much glue. All right, get a little glue on my toothpick, and I'm just going to scribe that off here into each one of these little crevices on both sides of each one of these three tabs, just to hold it in position. I think I got them all here. Didn't quite get enough glue out, but this, I think this will be all right. Okay, so I've glued all uh, all three tabs to the com. So, so now I'm just going to play the waiting game. I'm going to let this thing uh, harden up on its own. Don't be in a rush. Uh, let it sit an hour, give or take, or overnight, or whatever, and uh, it'll it'll solidify. Then um, we'll go on to the next step.